If you spent any time online recently, you might have come across ChatGPT, a language model that can generate human-like text-based answers on prompts. It's amazing to see how quickly it can create responses that seem almost lifelike. But what if I told you there's more to ChatGPT than just using the public web UI? What if I said you could have your very own personal instance running on your own server, with full control over how it works and what it can do? That's right, in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up your own personal ChatGPT-like AI in your own server using Docker, Olama, and OpenWebUI. No prior experience with these technologies is required, just a willingness to learn and to have some fun. So before we dive into the tutorial, let's make sure you have everything you need to follow along. First and foremost, you need a computer or server with Linux installed. You can use any distribution you like, but we will be using Rocket Linux 9 for this tutorial. Now, when it comes to hardware, things get a bit more specific. You're going to need an NVIDIA GPU with at least 8 gigs of VRAM. This is because Olama relies heavily on the VRAM and on the graphics processing unit for its AI magic. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install Docker, we're going to install the NVIDIA drivers, and we're going to install the NVIDIA container toolkit. First, let's update our system. So to update our system, we're just gonna do a DNF update. This will install all the latest packages and the latest kernel. All right, so our system is up to date. So now let's install Docker. First, we're gonna run a couple of commands to install some utilities. So yum utils first. Now we're going to configure the repo of Docker. So yum config manager. So the repo is installed and now we're actually going to install Docker. All of these commands are going to be in the description below so you can copy and paste and follow along. And now we're going to enable Docker so that it starts at boot time. So systemctl. Okay, so Docker is enabled. Let's clear our terminal. Okay, so now that we have Docker installed, now it's time to install the NVIDIA driver. But to install the NVIDIA driver, first we need to install all the development prerequisites. So first command that we're going to install here is we're going to install the development tools. This is going to install all the libraries and all the development tools that the NVIDIA driver requires to be able to build the kernel driver. Okay, so now it's finished installing all the development tools. Now we're going to install a couple of libraries. So we need libdglvnd, uh, the devel. We're going to install the Apple uh, repositories and also we're going to install nvtop. nvtop is a cool utility to be able to monitor our nvidia gpu. So we're going to install this ones. Well we need first to install the apple release to have access to nvtop. Once that's done now we can install nvtop. Okay so now all of the packages are installed and I want to show you my gpu here. So I can do the lshw command with a dash c and display and as you can see i have um geforce rtx 3080. now also as you can see here the driver that is currently being used is nouveau this is not what we want so now we're going to blacklist the nouveau driver before installing the nvidia driver and to do that we're going to edit the grub configuration file so we're going to install vim you can use any text editor that you like. I just really like Vim. I'm really used to it. So this is the one I'm going to use. And so we go Vim, Etsy, we're going to default and group. Here is the group configuration file. Here we're going to blacklist the Nouveau driver. And we're going to add some lines to this CMD line Linux uh, entry here. So the lines that we want to add is modpro blacklist Nouveau, RD driver blacklist Nouveau and Nouveau mod set equals zero. All of this is going to be in the description below, so you can just copy and paste and follow along. Okay, so now we're just going to write and quit to save those changes. And now we need to regenerate our group configuration. So to regenerate our group configuration, we're going to use the following command. This is new uh, since Rocky 9.4. You need to use this um, command instead of the old one. We're just going to run that command. And as you can see, the menu entry for UEFI firmware settings is done. Okay, so now we're at the point where we have all the packages installed and we also have our system up to date, but we need to reboot to apply all of these changes. So we're just going to give it a quick reboot. Okay, so the machine is back. Let's log back in. Now, if we execute the LSHW command, 
again, we can see that our NVIDIA GPU is unclaimed. Unclaimed just means that there's no driver that is claiming this PCI device. So this is what we want. So now it's time to install the NVIDIA drivers. So I'm going to go get the latest drivers from the NVIDIA website. But first, we need to install a cool utility called wget dnf install wget. This utility allows us to download any packages from a web server. So it's quite handy for downloading packages directly into your Linux machine. Now that we have wget installed, now we can do wget and just paste the URL for the latest NVIDIA driver and we should be able to download that. So the NVIDIA driver is downloaded. Now we're going to change the permissions. We're going to add uh, the ability to be executed because this is a script. So chmod plus x nvidia so now as you can see now we can execute the nvidia driver installation script to execute it we're just going to type dot and forward slash and the name of the script so we're going to go ahead and hit enter so now it's building the kernel modules this is the part that required all the development packages okay this is just it's looking for the x uh, library since we don't have an xorg or a gui installed on this server it's not able to find the packages so it's fine we can just click ok to continue do we want to install the 32-bit compatibility library I'm going to say yes for this one. It's asking for Vulkan components. We're not using Vulkan, so it's fine. So we're going to hit OK. Now it's just installing some extra libraries. Would you like to run the NVIDIA X config utility to automatically update your X configuration? We're going to say yes for now. We don't have a desktop environment installed, so it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to hit yes. And you have successfully installed the NVIDIA driver. We can click on OK. Perfect. We're going to clear our terminal. And now we can do an NVIDIA-SMI. And as you can see, the driver is installed and our NVIDIA RTX 3080 is uh, recognized and fully functional at this point. So the next step is to install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. The NVIDIA Container Toolkit basically is a layer that enables the, your containers to fully use the full power and the full RAM of your GPU. This is what we want because we're going to run all AMA in a Docker container. So we want that container to be able to take advantage of the full power of our GPU. To install the NVIDIA toolkit, we're going we're gonna to run the following commands. So here we're going to set up the NVIDIA toolkit repo. And if you're using any other distribution like Ubuntu or Debian based, I'm going to leave in the description below the equivalent commands for a Debian based distribution. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to enable the experimental repo. And last but not least, we're going to install the packages for the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. Okay, as you can see here, we installed all the toolkit uh, dependencies and the actual NVIDIA Container Toolkit. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to install Olama and Open Web UI and start running some queries to our local ChatGPT AI like um, instance. So the next thing that we're going to create here is we're going to create the Docker container for Olama and the Docker container for Open Web UI. So now that we have the NVIDIA Container Toolkit installed, we need to restart the Docker service. So we're going to go ahead and do system CTL restart Docker. Okay, we're going to check that it's up and running. All right, everything looks good. And now it's time to create our Docker Compose for Olama and Open Web UI. So I'm going to create a folder in slash opt. So mkdir slash opt docker sorry i already created this folder but that's how you create the folder and then we're going to go into that folder and we're going to create the olama folder so mkdir olama perfect we're going to go into olama and we're going to create our docker compose colon set paste and then insert to insert our Docker Compose. So we're going to insert the Docker Compose here really quickly. Image, Olama version 0.142, the ports that the Olama API uses, the volume that we're mapping to the Olama uh, container, and then we're deploying the GPU resource here. Our policy restart on let's stop, and we're connecting it to the front end network called Olama. As you can see here, we're defining the network here and plugging it into that network. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna save and quit for that one. And then we're going to go ahead and do docker compose up dash D. This usually will pull the images from the internet, but since I already had images, it just went ahead and created a new container. If we do docker PS, we can see that our Olama container is up and running, is forwarding port 11434, and the container name is called Olama. If you want to make sure that the Olama container is working, uh, we can open a Google Chrome instance, and we can navigate to the IP of our server and the port 11434. We hit enter, and as you can see here, the Olama API and the Olama service is working. 
Before we install Open Web UI and start playing around with the nice user interface, let's make some tests via CLI. The first thing that we want to do is we want to pull uh, one of the models so that we can try it out. The model that we're going to demo in this tutorial is Llama 3. This is the latest version of the uh, Llama 3 large language model and it's really good. So I'm just going to copy and paste the command to pull that model. So we're going to do a docker exec dash it into the Olama container and the command that we're doing is olama pull llama 38b. If we do this, it's going to go ahead and connect to the container and it's going to download the llama 38 billion parameters uh, language model. So we just need to sit tight and wait for this to download. Okay, and as you can see, the model was successfully downloaded. Uh, this model is actually downloaded into the folder that we have here. So you can reuse the, the models. You don't need to download the model every time you want to use it. Okay, so now let's interact with the Llama 3 large language model. To do that, we're going to execute the following command, docker exec dash it all llama run llama 3. And as you can see, it's successfully opened. Now it's asking us to send the message. So let's try it out. What I would also like to showcase here at the same time is our NVIDIA GPU and how it's being used. So I'm going to connect back to the VM to showcase our NVIDIA GPU and how it's working out. So remember, we installed the utility called NVTOP. Well, in this case, we're going to run it. So NVTOP, this will give us statistics about our GPU. So now let's interact with the Llama 3 large language model. Let's ask it something easy. For example, list 10 movies from Christopher Nolan. And look at that speed, guys. It's extremely fast. It's even faster than ChatGPT, I would assume. So as you can see, our GPU jumped all the way to like 89 or like 90% because it was really using just the GPU. And as you can see, this model, the 8B1, is using around 5 gigs of VRAM. This is why I recommend you to have at least 8 gigs, but like you can maybe get away with like something like 6 or uh, 4 even. So now that this is working out on the CLI, now it's time to set up Open Web UI. So to exit our out of the model, we're going to tap forward slash buy. This will bring us back to our usual terminal. And now it's time to install Open Web UI. We're going to do the same. We're going to go back one folder. Now we are in OPT Docker and we're going to create another folder called MKDIR. And this is going to be Open Web UI. We're going to go in. We're going to create our Docker Compose. Awesome. Oops. Colon set paste insert. And we're going to insert our Open Web UI docker container configuration here really quickly open web ui the image is the main one i'm mapping port 3000 to 8080 you can change this if you want to and we also have just have one volume mapped to the uh, backend data of open web ui restart policy on let's stop and we're plugging it into the olama front end network so that they can communicate between them okay so without further ado we're just going to save that and we're going to do docker compose up dash d our trusty command. Same thing. This might take a few seconds for you to pull all the images. Open Web UI is a little bit heavy. It's around four gigs, uh, more or less. I already had the image downloaded. So that's why the container is just starting. Now we're going to check our Docker PS to see if our container is up. And as we can see here, Open Web UI is here up and running in port 3000. So let's check out Open Web UI in our Chrome browser. So we're going to go back to our Chrome browser here. And now we're going to type the IP of our server. That's 078 port 3000. Okay, so the first time that you sign up, this is going to be actually where you create your, your administrator account. So this can be anything. So I'm just going to call it admin and admin at distrodomain.com and you just enter a password, create account. So this is Open Web UI. It's actually fairly similar to ChatGPT UI. And this is one of the things that I love. It, like the look and feel is the same, but you're actually running it in your local server using your own GPU. Okay, so now let's configure Open Web UI to work with your Olama instance that we just tested previously. First thing, we're going to go into admin and then we're going to go into settings. Now we're going to go into admin settings and we're going to go to connections. And here is where, where we are going to add our Olama instance that is running on the same Docker network. So because it's running on the same Docker network, we can actually just call the name of the container. If you remember correctly, if we go back here, the name of the container is just Olama. And we're going to use HTTP because it's the we're actually interacting with the Olama API. We're going to click here on the verify connection. And as you can see, server connection is verified. So now we can go back into models and here you should already have yeah, your Llama 3 latest model. So now we're ready to start interacting with Llama 3 
with open web ui let's go now and start a new chat so now let's ask him the same question as we did previously so list 10 movies oh first we need to select our model here up here sorry so llama 3 perfect awesome so list 10 movies from christopher nolan okay is thinking our gpu is working hard yes 80 percent. there we go we go back and it answers again but now in a nice interactive web UI. This is the power of the large language models running on your GPU. Pretty interesting that you can run this at home and we, you only need an NVIDIA GPU. Most of us, we already have an NVIDIA GPU since we play a lot of video games. So now the only, the only drawback of this is that the server needs full access to your GPU. So you won't be able to use the GPU for this and for gaming. And the awesome thing about this is that you can expose all of these services to the internet so that you can have access to your own private chat GPT everywhere you go. If you don't know how to do that, I'm going to link up here my video about Nginx Proxy Manager and how to proxy and expose services to the web securely. You can add a domain name, something like name, and you can also add an HTTPS certificate to secure all your connections. You can even share this with your friends so that they can use your chat GPT instead of the public one. Now, Olama is not restricted just to the Llama models. If we actually go to the Olama website, here there's a massive list of large language models that you can actually pull from this same instance and add to your open web UI. And this for this tutorial, I only use the Llama 3 one because it's the latest one, but you can use Coin 2, you can use Phi 3, you can use Gemma, you can use Mistral, and all of these are available through the Docker container that we just installed. So you can have multiple different AIs in your web UI. Uh, some are better at coding, for example, others are better at just uh, creating text, and some are trained in a different way, specialized ones. So this is just awesome that this is actually free and we can just self-host it in our in our environment and we don't need to worry about our information or our prompts being sent to open ai if you care a lot about your privacy this is one of the best solutions that i've ever found and so with this now you have a chat gpt ai running in your home lab that you can expose to the internet and share with your friends or you can use it on your personal projects without having to give your data to open ai and with that said that's all i have for you for today i hope you enjoyed and if you did give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this and i'll see you on the next one